गुड मॉर्निंग लेट्स डिस्कस टुडे अबाउट द मैथमेटिकल एनालिसिस ऑफ पोलराइज लाइट ओके सो लेट ए बीम ऑफ प्लेन पोलराइज लाइट बी इंसिडेंट नॉर्मली ऑन ए क्रिस्टल परपेंडिकुलर टू द ऑप्टिक एक्सिस सो वी हैव डिस्कस व्हाट इज ऑप्टिक एक्सिस एंड लेट्स इमेजिन ए beam of plane polarized light falling on a crystal perpendicular to the optic axis the refracted ray is then split into extraordinary ray and ordinary ray these waves are polarized in perpendicular planes so this we have seen in uh, double refraction images that is when it is getting double refracted the planes of this vibrations will be different this different directions this is in the plane of uh, vapor and this vibration is perpendicular to the plane of vapor so so that the plane of vibrations are uh, perpendicular to each other so that's what they are saying here this waves are polarized in perpendicular planes so here uh, a figure is shown look at this figure Uh, the incident wave is traveling along the z-axis. So here is x-axis. This is y-axis. So z-axis is towards uh, or or from the mm, in a plane perpendicular to the in a direction perpendicular to the plane of the paper. That is the z direction. That is outward outward the plane of the paper. That is z-axis. So this is e x. This is e y. That is component of the electric field along x and e y. Uh, or in other words, it is the um, extraordinary wave and and ordinary wave along x and y axis. On superposition of this x and y component of e y, the tip of the resultant vector, that is the resultant vector, is a traces a curve. producing different types of polarized light okay so this extraordinary and uh, ordinary waves are traveling in different direction that is into mutually perpendicular direction and this their plane of vibrations are different and according to that the resultant wave may produce different types of polarized lights okay so let's analyze it mathematically Let the two waves are represented by e x is equal to e one sine omega t. Okay, that is e x. E x is e one sine omega t, and e y is equal to e two sine omega t plus delta, where e one and e two are the amplitudes of e x and e y respectively, and delta is the phase difference between them. Okay, so uh, the component e x that is that along x axis is represented by this expression e one sine omega t, and the component along y is represented by this expression where e one and e two are the amplitudes, and delta is the phase difference between these two components. Okay. Now, from the equation one, this first equation. Mm, we can write this equation as e x by e one. That is, mm, bringing the e one to the left side so that it becomes e x by e one. If we can write it as e y, so e one is sine omega t. Okay, and uh, we know sine square uh, omega t plus or sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to one, or cos theta is equal to square root of one minus sine square theta. Or from that. Uh, using this expression, we can write cos omega t is equal to square root of one minus uh, as sine square theta, where sine square theta is sine omega. T. I am talking in, in general terms, irrespective of the angle omega or theta. Okay, so cos omega t is equal to square root of one minus e x by e one all square. Now, from this expression two, we can write. E y by e two. Similarly, uh, similar to this equation, E y by e two is sine omega t plus delta. And if we are ex expanding the bracket, if we are expanding the bracket as sine a. Uh, sorry, this bracket is here appearing here. 
before the omega okay not here uh, before the omega if you are expanding the bracket as sin a plus b which is sin a cos b plus cos a sin b we will get sin omega t cos delta plus cos omega t sin delta now uh, instead of sin omega t we can write from the a expression this is ex by e1 okay so it will become instead of sin omega t x by e1 cos delta and instead of cos omega t we can write the expression square root of 1 minus e x by e1 whole square so we have written it here so this expression become like this okay now what we are doing this left side is e y by e2 so e y by e2 minus e x by e1 cos delta is equal to square root of this into sin delta if you are squaring this equation on both sides we will get uh, this will be in the form a minus b all square on the left side so we can write e y square by e2 square that is a square minus uh, e x square so this is uh, plus 10 mm, because squaring this will give you uh, a square plus b square minus 2ab cos theta. So this is plus. This term is plus. You correct that. Uh, so ex square by e1 square cos square delta minus 2ab cos delta. That is 2 ex e y by e1 e2 cos delta. Now the right side is uh, on squaring the square, square root is gone and this term is remaining like this and if you are expanding the bracket uh, by multiplying with the sin square delta inside we will get sin square delta minus e x by e1 all square into sin square delta okay now we can bring this sin square this term this last term uh, to the left side uh, so that it become so uh, the coefficient of the sin square delta is e x by e1 all square and this cos square delta is e x by e1 all square so this is same so we can club these two terms is sin square term and cos square term uh, so that it will become e x by e1 all square or e x square by e1 square into cos square delta plus sin square delta which is nothing but one so the uh, remaining term is its coefficient only that is e x square by e1 square plus e y square by e2 square okay that is the first term minus the remaining term is this is okay and the right side is left with one more term sin square delta so this equation is remaining like this so if you look at this equation you can see that it's a general equation of an ellipse in the form uh, a by b. so this is a uh, general equation of an ellipse so we can consider the special cases for this uh, general expression uh, if you are putting delta is equal to zero that is the phase difference between this as zero then sin delta is equal to 0 and cos delta is equal to 1 then this equation will converge to e x square by e1 square plus e y square by e2 square minus 2 e x e y by e1 e2 is equal to 0 or we can write as this is in the form of a minus b whole square or e x by e1 minus e y by e2 all square is equal to 0 from this we will get e x by e1 is equal to e y by e2 or e y is equal to e2 by e1 into x this is in the form of y is equal to m into x mm. that is this represents an equation of a straight line okay that means this wave is plane polarized then the phase difference is zero okay that is the uh, conclusion here and when delta is equal to pi by t that is the phase difference is 90 uh, then the sin delta is equal to 1 cos delta is equal to 0 if you are substituting the value in the above expression then that equation general equation 
will give you an expression e x square by e 1 square plus e y square by e 2 square is equal to 1. Okay, this is an equation of an ellipse symmetrical about x and y axis and the emerging light is in elliptically polarized. So, we will get elliptically polarized light. So, the situation is the phase difference is pi by 2. Okay, so we have got uh, plain polarized light and uh, elliptically polarized light and now look at the situation um, when delta is equal to pi by 2 and e x and e y is equal to e 0. E x and e y is equal to e 0 means the amplitudes are equal when the resultant vector e makes an angle 45 degree with x axis. Okay. So, the situation arises when the resultant vector ve uh, makes an angle 45 degree with the x axis. So, that sin delta is equal to 1 and cos delta is equal to 0 from this uh, phase difference value. Okay. And uh, here E x and E y is equal to E 0. Amplitudes are same and we have seen the condition when this occurs. Uh, then if you are substituting this in the general expression, we will get E x square by E 0 square plus E y square by E 0 square is equal to 1. The difference between this equation and this equation is the denominators are same in this expression which is E 0 square but here it is different E 1 square and E 2 square. So, this represents an equation of a circle e x square plus e y square is equal to e 0 square which is in the form of a square plus b square is equal to c square. This is an equation to a circle and the emerging light is circularly polarized. So, this is the mathematical analysis of uh, a polarized light source. We have analyzed a polarized beam in a mathematical way and we have found the situation when the light is elliptically, circularly and plane polarized. Okay, thus when a po plane polarized light is incident normally on a quarter wave plate perpendicular to the opt optic axis with vibrations inclined at 45 degree with the optic axis, it split up into ordinary and extraordinary components of equal amplitudes. The quarter wave plate introduces a phase difference of pi by 2 between them. When these components come out, they recombine to give circularly polarized light. So, that is the situation. Okay. Uh, this is uh, pure, uh, purely about circularly polarized light. So, so, the situation here is the light is circularly polarized when the light is incident normally on a quarter wave plate perpendicular to the optic axis but with the vibrations inclined at 45 degree with the optic axis then it is splits up into ordinary and extraordinary ray so the phase difference is pi by 2 uh, in such case the uh, components that is e ray and o ray uh, circularly polarized light ok so that is the situation now one more topic in this module and with this we can conclude this unit this is nothing but optical activity so when a plane polarized light is passed through certain solutions it is seen that it is seen that the plane of polarization of the light coming out of the solution is rotated through an angle. This property of rotation of the plane of polarization by certain solutions or crystals is called optical activity. So, what is meant by optical activity? So, there are such solutions or crystals uh, uh, in which or through which a light is passing through. And the emerging beam, that is the polarized beam emerging out of it is rotated through an angle. So, this is the property of that crystal or solution. Uh, so, such, a pro, uh, such an activity is called optical activity. Such so solutions are said to be optically active if 
a plane polar slide is rotated by passing through such solutions then such solutions are said to be optically active substances like sugar crystals sugar solutions cinnabar and turpentine are optically active and while some like calcites are not and so we were talking about calcite crystals uh, while uh, discussing the polarization but calcite crystals are not optically active that is the polarized light is not uh, get rotated uh, when coming through it um, but some other uh, substances are optically active like sugar crystal sugar solutions etc substances which rotate the plane of vibration in the right hand sense uh, when we are from the front of the propagating light and the waves are said to be dextro rotatory and uh, that is if you are uh, looking uh, from the front side of this uh, wave coming through the uh, crystal or the solution that is uh, imagine the light is falling through or coming uh, falling through this falling to this uh, uh, the solution and it is coming out to this solution the uh, so wave coming out to the out of the solution is polarized and when if you are looking from the front side of this uh, plane polarized light uh, and if it's rotating in the right hand sense then the light can be said to be dextro or dextro rotatory whereas uh, those substances which rotates this light in the left hand sense then it is said to be laboratory so right for dextro and left for laboratory the angle through which the plane of polarization is rotated depends on the concentration of the solution the length of the solution wavelength of the light and temperature etc so the parameters which uh, affect the plane of polarization that is the angle of rotation is <coughs> length length or thickness of the solution and concentration of the solution wavelength of the light which falling on it and the temperature okay this the angle of rotation for given wavelength at a room temperature sorry at a temperature can be given by theta is equal to slc by 10 where l is the length or thickness of the solution in centimeter and c is the concentration of the light in gram per cubic centimeter uh, or as is a constant called specific rotation of the solution so this is the equation which will give you the angle of rotation for a given wavelength so for a particular for a single wavelength or a, for a uh, wavelength of light we know uh, the angle of rotation is slc by 10 okay so it has uh, specifically charted here that is the optical activities depends on thickness of medium concentration of solution wavelength of light and temperature we have already discussed here mm. and the angle of rotation is given by this expression if uh, in this expression if in this expression L is equal to 10 centimeter and C is equal to 1 gram per cubic centimeter if you are substituting this value L is equal to 10 and C is equal to 1 then S is equal to theta that is denominator is 10 so it, so it will cancel it so that we will get S is equal to theta the specific rotation is defined as the angle of rotation produced by dc centimeter long dc centimeter means 10 centimeter here we have taken l is equal to 10 centimeter so this is centimeter long optically active liquid column of concentration 1 gram per cubic centimeter so we will get we are we are getting s is equal to o theta when uh, l is equal to 10 centimeter l is equal to dc is decimeter and c is equal to 1 gram per cubic centimeter so we can uh, define the specific rotation uh, as as the angle of rotation produced by a decimeter long optically active liquid column of concentration 1 gram per cubic centimeter so this is about optical activity and specific rotation so we this we conclude this module polarization